Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Listen, I've got to take a second and thank you for all your kind words about my knee surgery a couple weeks ago, about my sermon from Crosspoint from Labor Day weekend. Thank you so much. I've never gotten the amount of feedback that we have gotten over the story, particularly about my knee that you can see on my Instagram and about the sermon in general. We linked all that in Friday's AFD Week in Review, but you can always watch on Crosspoint's YouTube or listen on their podcast. But I just want to say thanks. It's really kind of y'all to um, reach out and say when stuff matters to you that we do. So thank you. It meant a lot to me last week. Today on the show, one of our favorites is back. Are y'all ready? Sophie Hudson, also known as Boo Mama, is here. You may remember her from episode 51, episode 228, or from our That Sounds Fun live tour. Sophie's an author, a podcaster, and all-around delight of a human. She's the co-host of the Big Boo cast with Melanie Schenkel, one of my favorites that I do not miss. And if y'all aren't listening to them, listen. They're the most ridiculous storytellers, and also they talk about college sports, which I love. You guys are missing out. Sophie's latest book, A Fine Sight to See, comes out tomorrow. Y'all, it is a deep dive in a way only Sophie could do that's all about women embracing their role as leaders. So you know we're going to talk about it today. Here's my conversation with my dear friend, Sophie Hudson. That sounds fun. Sophie Hudson, welcome back to That Sounds Fun. Thanks, Annie. I mean, thanks for sticking around town. <laughs> but behind the scenes, we've been here for the Ryman weekend. You came yes, to town for that. I did. And you have been, I mean, you haven't been home in oh five days. It's been it's been a little bit. I was yeah. home for like twenty four hours. Okay. But I had to do my audio book last week. Yes. Which I used to do in Birmingham, but now for for whatever reason, yeah. they sent me elsewhere. Yeah. And uh I'm gonna tell you that's an interesting deal. Yes, talk about doing audio book. People don't know it's it's a wild experience. It, I mean, first of all, you're you're in a tiny little booth. Yep. There's there's really no ventilation at no. all. So it's a, it's also, it functions as a little bit of a sauna. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's a health experience. It really is a health experience. <laughs> there's, a, there's some toxins <laughs> that you purge out of your system <laughs> as you read your words. But, I mean, but it was also, I mean, it was sweet. You know, it's, it's kind of fun because after you write a book, you kind of don't have much to do with it for about six months. Yeah, that's right. So it was kind of fun to read it out loud. Yeah. Um, I had the best sound engineer. It was yeah. a great experience, but I would do that. And then you kind of have to be mindful about talking and yeah, your, voice your voice and yeah. all that. So I would just go back to the hotel and like watch the Olympics. Yeah. And I don't know. It was just a strange little kind of a little lonely stretch. Maybe. Where did they have you stay in Marietta? I actually stayed in Sandy Springs. Oh, okay. So the recording studio was in Marietta, but I stayed in Sandy Springs. It was about 15 minutes away. Um, You talk about this in the book. It is called A Fine Sight to See leading because you were made for it. Yes. Um, you talk about that sister moved to Birmingham. She did. My sister moved to Birmingham. They lived in Nashville forever. Yes. Worked in Nashville forever. And... Uh, I don't know. I, when they kind of started talking about what their lives would look like yeah. when they retired, my sister's 14 years older than I am, uh, they really felt like they kind of wanted to come to Birmingham. And so, I don't know, a couple of years ago, there was a house on our street for sale. It's they crazy. They drove over to look at it, but in the meantime, found a house that's a, like just right up the hill from us. Uh-huh. And they ended up buying it and moved two summers ago to Birmingham. It's so fun. And literally, like, you can walk up the hill from our house and be in their backyard. Oh, my gosh. So, like, my, my brain got there because you were in Marietta, where my family is. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I mean to ask her about yeah. sister moving to Yeah, so she Birmingham. moved to Birmingham. And so, uh, now, I haven't seen them, ironically, in about three weeks, I yeah. feel like, because I've been on the road. Yeah. But they're just right there. And so we go to dinner every Friday night. That's kind of our thing. Oh, that's fun. And, you know, kind of catch up, depending on yeah. what the week's been. Yeah. But it's been really sweet. Um, um, are you, when you're gone for a chunk of time like this from home, mm-hmm. I mean, Alex is at Stanford. Yeah. He's, is he a senior? He'll be a junior. A junior. Yeah. That is crazy. Bananas. Because how old was he when you met him? He was. They were in kindergarten. Him and yeah. Caroline were yeah. going to kindergarten. Yeah. Because I remember we were at a Mexican restaurant and you were doing the color sheet with him. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. So and he's now 21 the- now. That is wild. Isn't that wild? So, uh, What do you like about having a college student? Oh, I like so much about having a college student. I'll tell you what's been fun this summer, because he's been home, but he had an internship. Yeah. I like watching him process stuff as an adult. I like oh, watching. I like watching the part where he is... is 
kind of starting to figure out what motivates him, yeah. what does not motivate him. How is that going to work together uh, when he, you know, finishes college and goes out into the world? Yeah. I like watching him figure that out. I like I like the part where he's talking through some of that stuff and where it's not like having a second grader where you have to like, all right, so here's what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's more you just listen and ask questions. And how much do you see him during the school year? Even though he's in, he's at Sanford, so he's in town. He's you in say town. that publicly, right? I'm not. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was oh, like, yeah. I'm not like telling the world no. how to find your son. No, no, I don't, we don't see him that much. Yeah. We try to pretend like he's far away, yeah. just so he feels right. like he has you know boundaries. Yeah, that's right. And that's so we right. have some boundaries. Sure. Yeah. Now, like his roommate, their freshman year got the flu and came just came to our house because of course. he lives in Texas, and yes. so so they're. You know, times when I guess extenuating circumstances happen, and so maybe we'll see him a little bit more. But for the most part, not very often. All summer long, it feels like him and his buddies have been on your couch. Um, all summer long, it has it has really been. Um, I don't know, just the sweetest thing because yeah. yeah, they you know they're grown people and they they like to hang out. Yeah, and, uh, it's just. I don't know. It's a sweet time. I feel um, at a, such an advantage in this conversation because I'm such a faithful Big Boo podcast listener oh, that him. I'm like, okay, here's what else I want to ask you about. Because here are these <laughs> things on the show that I just like quietly like I have more questions about that because I listen to the Big Boo podcast, a yeah, Big Boo cast. Y'all just listen, I thought today, I thought, you know what? We may talk about this, but we may not. Uh-huh. And it's fine because I'm, I'm, listen, I'm good to just, if we just need to catch up. I'm well, so I know happy. that's it. That's what I'm like, okay, so the kitchen <laughs> renovation is going yeah. great. You oh, just yeah. love it. Oh, yeah, we love it. It's done. That's, yeah. That's that. We wrap that up kind of early on in the summer. Will you tell the coffee maker story that y'all have two coffee makers? I think that is the dearest part. Do you really? I love that. Okay. I love that you have like this really fancy, nice one. Well, David likes to make his coffee fresh every morning. Uh huh. But he likes a pot of coffee yeah. that he can go back to. I do not. I don't like old coffee. Uh huh. I want. I want a cup of coffee that is hot and yes, fresh. Yes, yes. So we, when we redid the kitchen, we have a coffee bar. And yep. he has his, like, coffee pot where he likes to make his pot of coffee every uh-huh. morning. And I have my coffee maker where I like to go make my fresh yeah. cup of coffee. Cup. It's very important to me that it has not been, like, it doesn't sit for any period of time. Yes. It gets, uh, it gets, it gets cold. It gets stale. I don't, uh-huh. I don't enjoy it. So we do. We have two coffee makers. What's been the best part for you about the kitchen? That's my favorite part. What's your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, listen, that's a good part. My favorite part is probably uh, I have a big oven now. I had yeah. a tiny oven for a really yes, long time because yeah. our house was built in the 70s. It was this little bitty oven. And so now I have a great big oven and I can put full size cookie sheets in it. And that is just the height of kitchen you luxury. You put full size cookie no, sheets in your other no, one for you 20 could, years. For 20 years. You could barely get a half size sheet in there. Wow. But it was the How of, did you do? You're such a good cook. Oh, listen, just as industrious as you uh-huh, can imagine. Uh-huh. It was just always a huge timing issue. So now, I mean, I'll be like, Look, I'm going to put this full size cookie sheet in, and then I'm going to put another full size cookie <laughs> sheet in. Everybody, watch me go. Watch me go. So it's been great. Um, you know that I am always going to publicly request that Weeda Wednesday comes back at some point. I know. Annie, I've run out of things. It was so much work for you. It was a lot of work, and I run out of things to cut. Oh, okay. You know, like okay. I just, I don't know, how many different ways can I make cornbread? Right. You know, Ooh, your cornbread always looks so good. There were a lot of potato centric oh, things listen, too. The potato Jeez. was really one of God's great yeah, gifts. And yeah, that, I mean, it's so good. I love it. I'm so glad that you um, um, that you did. It's still a highlight on your Instagram, right? It's still a highlight. Okay, so if and people did, didn't get to watch it, yeah, then go back. And I put all the recipes in one place. Yeah, but. I'm really glad I did it. And occasionally I'll remember something. Yeah. And that's kind of what I did this summer. Yeah. I did a couple. But it takes forever. And yeah. also, I don't know if you know this about me, Annie, but I'm not very gifted in the way of audiovisual things. I mean, that's what you say, but you edit the Big Boo cast. I do, but it's it's really just because I'm stubborn. Like, I just, I had to figure <laughs> it yourself. out a long time ago. And keep in mind, when we started the podcast, it was 2007. I was about to say, y'all are way early. Where, where was I going to go? What to, are y'all going to do in 27 when you're your 20-year anniversary? I mean, knowing us, we'll probably say, hey, it's our 20th anniversary. And then we'll just keep it moving, you know. Couple of y'all ni- did do that for, what was it, 400 maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, right. just Here a we co- go. couple of nines, you know. We just uh, don't put a lot of thought maybe uh, into the things we should think about about sometimes i mean i feel like i know melanie 
And I know you and I have always taught college baseball. I feel like college baseball has made a renaissance Annie, in her life. I do too. I feel like college baseball, something has happened. Yeah, in the last two seasons, and maybe? The, maybe like the last two or three seasons. Yeah. Where it's like, I feel like it now, it's, it's really getting the attention it deserves. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And people care about it. And the, it's the most fun. They're... Uh, they're dust up about their coach leaving to go to Texas. Oh, Mel! I thought Melanie was going to become Listen, a private investigator. I really did too. I was actually in New York when that happened, uh-huh. and I was on the way. I was with my friend Casey, and we were on the way to. Uh, we were going to this thing at the at the Carlisle, like oh, this, cool. and like I was so excited. Yeah, and so I'm all dressed up. I, we're in the car, you know, like we're so we're we're so excited about we're going to have a fancy dinner yeah. and the whole thing. And I answer my phone, and Melanie was like, "Well." <laughs> The baseball coach left, and I, you had no, I had no no choice in the matter, and wouldn't yeah. have chosen anything else than just to sit with her in that, yeah, yeah, because it was deep, Annie. Yes. It was real, real deep. She was like, "Well, the the <laughs> chat groups are saying this, and the the bulletin boards are saying this." And I was like, "Oh, yeah." Wait, and when she was like, "Okay, y'all need to tune in to the Patreon uh-huh. podcast episode because that's where we're going to talk about all this." Yeah, yeah. And the players DMing her. Yes, she couldn't read some of the DMs she was getting. No. I was like, "She well, is in." Here's one of the things that happened was that over the course of the season and particularly like in the regionals and the super regionals she yeah. she got to meet a lot of the players families yep and so she she did have some good kind of behind the scenes info but it was it was a whole thing and it i was, was just, listen i was delighted to be along for the ride uh, same honestly same mm-hmm. um uh, tell me about getting to go to sec days y'all done this a couple of times now we have okay so that is so fun so i we have a friend in birmingham who works for the sec and a couple of years ago, we were like, we would we would really like to come. Like, can we come like just like open doors or something? We yeah. would just love to yeah. see it kind of in action. So we went a couple of years ago and uh, didn't get to go last year. So we went back this year in Dallas. And I mean, what what on earth could be better than sitting in a room and these coaches coming in? And it's only football coaches, it's right? Only football okay, coaches. Because this is like SEC days getting ready for college football, right? So every every team comes through. There there are four coaches, well, four teams a day. Okay. Each coach brings three players. The wow. the players. I mean, when I tell you they think about what they're wearing, I mean, they, really? they. Is it suits? Think, it's stuff? suits. <gasps> cool. It's fantastic. The shoes are a whole deal. Oh, wow. And so, and, and then a lot of the media who cover the SEC go, and that's when they do a lot of their preseason interviews, a lot Got of the it. stuff that you see during the season, they film during media days. Now, oh, interesting. So, but listen, Melanie and I aren't doing any of that, right? <laughs> I mean, we're just like flies on the wall. We we're like standing up against walls, just trying to peep whatever we uh-huh, can peep. Uh-huh. Um, but it's fascinating, and like it really is interesting. One to listen to the coaches. Yeah, so interesting to watch the dynamics between the coaches and their players. Because can you tell like, oh, this this feels tense, or this feels like? Well, you can just tell who has a more formal approach. Oh, got it. And who has a, a more like. I, I, want, I don't want to say relational, but like a less formal approach, got it, got maybe. It, got it. I mean, from what we can see, we don't really know. Sure, but yeah, but but it's just it. it's just fun to be around it. It's fun to see all the the media do their thing. Yeah. That's really interesting to me, like yeah. how they find the stories, how they cover the players and the coaches and all that. And it, it's it's really a blast. Did it's, you learn anything from Kirby Smart for me about Georgia Bulldogs? Uh, they're gonna be real good, Annie. Yeah, I, I think they might be real. They're good gonna again. be real good. Uh, th- they're. The, here's the thing about Kirby Smart. I think he's so personable. He, to me, is one of those people, though. There's so much going on underneath the surface, I think. Yeah, and yeah. like, and to, to quote uh, George Bush back in the day, uh, some strategery. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Know? I think so. There's, uh, was that, I don't know if that was George Bush or if that uh-huh. was Will Ferrell uh-huh. playing way, George Bush. Either way, strategery. And so uh, he's really interesting to me because he comes off as like just this really personable, you know, kind of like just Southern guy. Yeah. But there's a genius back there. Well, thanks. Probably well a lot because he was born that way and he's worked really hard, but also because yeah. of Saban, because he worked under yes. Saban for so long. Listen, I, I could, if I were still in college uh, and somebody asked me to write, if I were still like in psychology classes, uh-huh. I'm fascinated by Nick Saban. Fascinated. Yeah. He is de-aged by 15 years since 100%. he quit coaching. A hundred percent. Wild. And one of the things that Melanie and I were so I mean, like, just completely captivated by in media days is now that he's he's moved to the media side, 
you could watch him. I mean, like he's learning. He's immersed himself. Yeah, because he was just a, a colleague of y'all's. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, for sure. Yeah, and, and, yes, and all our private conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I we wish. talked about oh like, gosh. golly, what a what a joy to be colleagues now. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like it's he's one of those people. I'm so intimidated by him. I've never met him, but yeah, I, I'm exactly. kind of like, don't look at it, don't look yeah. at it. Uh, but it was interesting to watch him work. Yeah, like really work at Media Days. What's the new Alabama coach like? From all I understand, again, I have not met him, uh-huh. a delight. Okay. What do you think watching Alabama Rush? Because we're kicking up again. Listen, I, we're kicking up again. Have you seen the girl who's doing the cost of all the outfits? No. She 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 does her little, you know where how people make reels where here's the video behind you and then her little face is in the bottom corner? Yeah. She goes through and the girl says, my shirt is from da-da-da, and the girl pops up the shirt and says, Five hundred dollars. My Get skirt out. is from da da da, and then goes through all the bracelets. There was a girl who had a fifteen thousand dollar outfit on. Oh my goodness! I, can you imagine? Here's what I wonder, though. Here's what I wonder. I just wonder sometimes when they go like David Yaron. Uh huh. Um, that's my official uh, imitation, that's by the perfect. way, of somebody going through Rush at the yes. University of Alabama. Uh, when when we hear like David Yaron, is it really David Yaron or is it like a knockoff David Yaron? Uh huh. Uh-huh. I just, in my heart of hearts, have to believe that nobody would trust a college student with a real live. David that's, Yerman bracelet. That's what I would think. But but I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. They. I, I think it is a facet. That, this is not what Rush was like when I was at no. Georgia. No. Or when I was at State. No. 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 I mean, we did. People bought dresses, but I mean, I think people bought dresses at Old Navy. Oh, for sure. It yeah. was not a high stakes event. I, here's what's happened with me in Rush Talk this year. I was uh-huh. thinking about this last night. One, I feel like I'm, uh, uh, for some reason, I'm getting on TikTok in particular. I'm getting more rush talk, like commentary, you know, from Yeah, like people. the girl with the outfits. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting more of that, less of the actual girls. Oh, interesting. Me uh, too, actually. I haven't seen a single girl doing it. I've yeah, only seen the because girls. Because I, I think the girls may be... To some degree, I don't know. I think they're playing it a little differently than they did. Interesting. But and then and I I cannot even tell you how many recreations of the Thunderstruck dance I have seen in front of sorority houses. A wild number. A wild number uh, from a variety of schools. Yes. Uh, just a, a whole array of yes. sororities. Yes. So I've seen a lot of the sorority content. But not as much of the rushy content. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, I should say the, the what do you call it? We, I think you're right. Rushies. PNMs. No, yeah. PNMs. Oh, PNMs. Yes. Yeah. Right. Potential new members. Yes, yes. So, anyway. I mean, I'm so happy college football's back. I cannot even begin to tell you how ever present it is in my mind. I know. I'm just, I'm, I'm delighted. I'm excited for what's ahead of us. Same. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm ready for. I think Twitter, and I know I'm supposed to call it something else now, but it's always Twitter yeah. to me, is really at its best uh, in college football season. It was great during uh, the Olympics, but yeah. I really love Twitter during college football season okay. because of the memes. Yes. Uh, the people who will capture something that happens in a crowd and then yes. you know, caption it for yes. us. Yes. Yes. Uh, I just. I love it so much. Now, I will admit I'm not as likely at this stage in my life to uh, to show up for a, uh, an August or a September football game. Oh, you won't see me at Stanford Stadium I, for nothing. I am not interested in uh, in that particular journey for no. myself in front Same. of others. No. I, I'm not really uh, comfortable with that level. The of, amount of sweating. Of sweating in, in public. No. That is just not, that's not a place I'm going to land. No, those August games oh. at Georgia were like oh. abs- sunburn, sunburn, sweat. Oh, yeah. gosh. Terrible. Brutal. Brutal. Now, but when that first cool breeze comes through, I'm all the way in. Man, that, um, that first college game day, mm-hmm. when you turn the TV on at 8 a.m. and it's cool outside. Uh, there is, oh. there's, when it's I'm cool not outside, sure there's anything like it, no, honestly. There's not, because you know you need a sweatshirt. Yeah. You know you need a sweatshirt to go with your pajama shorts or whatever. To go with your pajama <laughs> shorts? That is 100% it, Sophie. It's pajama shorts and sweatshirt. 100%. I can tell you the sound of my porch door opening. Yes, ma'am. Because it's 60 degrees. That's it. That's oh, it. I cannot wait. The coffee the on that first crisp game yes, day yes. is like nothing else. You're exactly right. It's the best. And so I cannot, 
I cannot wait yeah. for it. And then I also, I love the part where there's always somebody who comes on strong that you never expected. That's exactly right. And I love it. I, I like love to see it. I like it when it's outside the SEC yeah. because yeah. I'm, we're so inundated with the SEC right. in Birmingham. That's right. Uh, How's Mississippi State going to be this year? Okay, here's my hope, Amy. Yeah. Here's my hope. I don't know. My hope is just that we're gritty. Okay. I think we we do our best when we're gritty. You know, we have a new coach this year, yep. Jeff Levy. Yeah. And from from everything I hear, he's a, a great a great coach of young men. Okay. So I'm hoping that I'm I'm really hoping that uh, we we just we'll fight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because we're not going to ever have the talent that Georgia has or Alabama has or you know even. A and M, or you know, I mean, yeah. we're just we're 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 always in competition with Ole Miss for the best players, and so we'll see. Well, I'll tell you something. I, this is this may be a bratty thing to say, so forgive me. Um, I know you're not supposed to say ifs and apologies, but okay. forgive me if. Um, a thing changed when Georgia started winning national championships, where now we expect to win every game. So yeah. you go into every game thinking, please don't let this be the one you lose. I know. But when I was in college, we were like ten and two, eight and four. Like so, oh. you were kind of like. We're gonna win most of these, yeah. And but there will be some we don't, yeah. And and, and there is a um, there is a new pressure that I did not experience. A hundred percent. Now I have I, I I have joked a lot that I'm not married yet, but the best feeling I've ever felt was when Georgia <laughs> won the national championship the first time. And so um, uh, listen, when, it was unbelievable. When but, State won the national championship in baseball a few years ago, yes. I was like, this is what Alabama feels like all the time. All the time. But it's not. Uh-huh. It doesn't keep feeling like that. It right. feels like that the first time. Right. That's what a friend of mine who's a big Alabama fan said. Like, you'll be surprised should this happen again. Yeah. How you kind of get used to it. Uh-huh. And I don't know if it'll ever happen for Mississippi State again with baseball. But, like, I can't even conceive of a world where State wins a national championship in football. Uh-huh. That that year, Dax junior year, we yeah, went 8-0. Yeah. We and oh, yep. I felt like I was living on pins and needles. That's right. When's it going to fall apart? That's and right. then it, it kind of does fall apart. And, and you go, okay, like, here oh, we are again. Okay. Good. All right, I can breathe. Back Melanie, the- every year, when A&M, whenever they have their first loss, she's like, okay, I can breathe now. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. That's yeah. right. And I, that's how it used to be for Georgia, mm-hmm. and particularly when I was in college. Again, I, I hope we win national championships. I think it's very fun. I think it's good for the school. But um, okay, we are going to talk about your book. Okay, but listen, I'm like, this, is, this is the stuff I've been needing to do. I know. Listen, I'm. I mean, put it out into the ether. I'm dying to do a sports show. If if we ever want, me too. Me too. Do we do it? I don't know. I mean, what does it look like? How would we do uh, it? We've Melanie and I've talked about doing another Patreon level with sports. Oh, if you do it, that'd be great. I would just no, pay no, no. to be a part of your no, Patreon no. level. No, but what I'm and saying is, Georgia I think there, I person. think there's, and that's why we need to talk about this. Mm-hmm. I think there is, there's a place for for women yes. who love sports, yes, to talk about it, yes. And it's been so fun because we talk about sports so much uh-huh. uh, to like go to stuff, and when we meet listeners and meet their husbands, their husbands will listen too when we talk about sports. A guy because, I because, met yesterday said, "You bro enough that I listen to your podcast because ex- you talk about sports." Listen, but that's our whole like. I don't know. I have a whole thing about that. Like, okay. it's such a fun way to connect with all people, right? Yes. Like, yes. sports is such a great bridge. Yes, that's right. And it's so – so I love that that men will listen to us mm-hmm. talk about mm-hmm. sports. Mm-hmm. And I think it's not just that we love it. I think we're fairly knowledgeable about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But it's a different angle because for us – I mean, I've, I don't know about you, Annie. I've never played college football. No, nor I. Sadly, <laughs> I think we'd have both been great at but it. But there's a whole thing about the teamwork of it, about yeah. the leadership of it. Like, there's a whole deal that's enjoyable apart from the wins and losses part that's right. of it. That's right. The stories about, I mean, like, who who among us has not wept yeah. at oh, one of the behind the scenes stories? Saturday morning yes. stories. Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. I know. Like, I know. you see the best of everybody. I mean, the yeah. Olympics were so fun for that reason. You yeah. see the best of everybody. And it's there are so few spaces where we feel sort of corporately united with people. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it, it, it doesn't maybe happen in our churches as much as it right. used to. And right. that's a different deal. I mean, that's about a whole different topic. But... I think I think sports and concerts are kind of our, our sort of our last two big public square activities. Wow, that's really true. So that's really when when Nashville's um, hockey team was doing a run for the championship. Yeah, it was what 
everyone talked about yes. in this whole town. You put you built for for four games or something. You didn't do anything else those nights. That's right. And it was everybody. It was and everybody. It was so fun. And you know what you're not doing? You're not arguing about it. No. You're on the same page about it. Like, yeah. And they're just, they're not a whole lot of spaces where yeah. that happens anymore. So I think that's one reason why I maybe enjoy sports more than I ever have because it's a little bit of, it's just a little bit of a reminder of how fun yeah. life can be when we're kind of all about the same thing, even though we're cheering for different teams. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a delight. That fun. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation to tell you about one of our incredible partners, Our Place. If you're cooking eggs in the morning or maybe you're cooking them at night, live your best life, you get to do what you want to do, you've got to try Our Place's pans because they are the best for making your favorite eggs. They're the nonstick and non-toxic pans you need in your life. Plus, all of Our Place's cookware is so cute, too. There's so many fun colors to choose from. Our Place is a mission-driven and female-founded brand that makes all kinds of beautiful kitchen products that are healthy and sustainable. Sustainable. Their products are made without PFAS and Teflon. For context, most of today's nonstick pans contains PFAS, which are also known as forever chemicals, which are under increasing global scrutiny for their impact on the environment and our bodies. See why our place is in everyone's kitchen, from Selena Gomez to David Beckham. Cool crowd to run with. Upgrade to our place today and say goodbye to forever chemicals in your kitchen. Go to fromourplace.com and enter my code TSF at checkout to receive 10% off site-wide. That's fromourplace.com and the code is TSF. Like, that sounds fun. Our place offers a 100-day trial with free shipping and returns. That link, and y'all know pretty much every other link you could ever hope for, are in the show notes below, or just like my sermon from last week, we'll send them straight to you in Friday's AFD Week in Review. We hope it's the best email you get all week. You can get that by signing up in our show notes as well. And one more incredible partner I get to tell you about, Ritual. Did you know, you guys, this is unreal, women were excluded from clinical research policy by federal law until 1993, until I was in middle school? What? Women belong in scientific research. They are essential. We are essential, right? Well, Ritual knows. And they conducted a university-led human clinical trial for their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin to assess how effective it is. The results, it increased vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. Y'all know I love data, and these stats back up why I love this multivitamin so much. Their Essential for Women 18 Plus Multivitamin also has high quality traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms so you know you're getting exactly what's listed on the bottle. You just take two capsules a day which has nine key nutrients and the capsules feature a delayed release designed to dissolve later which helps make it gentle on an empty stomach. And I love the minty taste too. Y'all know that little minty tab in every bottle. No one likes taking vitamins with a bad aftertaste but the minty essence in every bottle keeps things fresh, and it helps make taking your multis every day actually enjoyable. Plus, Ritual multivitamins are vegan, non-GMO, gluten, and major allergen-free, and they're a female-founded B Corp, meaning they are holding themselves accountable to not just their company's financial health, but also the health of you and me and our planet. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month at ritual.com slash that sounds fun. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash that sounds fun for 25% off. Okay, now back to our conversation with Sophie. That sounds fun. You are one of my most faithful concert going friends. Do you have any shows <laughs> coming up this year? Is there anybody you're. You know, the seat? only thing, I think the only thing right now I have on the docket is Samara Joy. I don't know who that is. Um, listen. Samara Joy? She is a brilliant, young jazz vocalist. Oh, cool. And just, I mean, like the word sublime comes to mind when you think about what she does. Yeah, yeah. So gifted. And, but she's, I think, I mean, she's, she's, she's young. Yeah. Uh, so she's coming to Birmingham. I was so excited to see she's coming to Birmingham. Yeah. So I'm going to that. 
Uh, but we, we had a big spring because we had Tyler Childers in Birmingham, yeah. which was one of the most beautiful live shows I've I ever bet. seen. I will go see Need to Breathe. I don't even care when. I, you write about it in the book. <laughs> you write about missing a Need to Breathe show. Yeah. yeah. I don't even. Is that right? When it Need yeah, to Breathe? Yeah, it was Need to Breathe. Yeah. yeah. I don't even care. I'll go see them every time. Uh, who else? Alex went to see Zach Bryan, which I, that was Zach his. Bryan. Okay, but what see, a unifier of people! What a unifier right of people! Wild, right across everything. Yes, he gets it, and so I need to listen to his album. I haven't listened. Oh. I have a real um, weird trail of how I got to him because I pay attention to Dave Portnoy as a um, not anyone I'm recommending on a podcast. No, absolutely, but I pay attention to him as a business person absolutely. and as someone who's built a podcast network. Um, he has a, a podcast, yeah, yeah, an empire. Yeah, that's right, uh-huh. and I. I think they all are um, humans made in the image of God and also do not do work that brings light into the world. Okay. And so uh-huh. I want to, when we talk about who we compete with, quote, quote, uh-huh. we don't ever say anyone in the faith space because what a waste of energy. We're all doing the same thing. Right, right. But when I look at other networks who are not maybe doing as much work that brings light into the world, I go like, I want to watch them and be, I want to have more influence than that. Okay. So I watch Dave Portnoy. Okay. Um, he has a podcast with Zach Bryan's girlfriend. Oh, I didn't realize that. And so that. I, w- I came to Zach Bryan through through seeing her, and she me- and when she met him, and now she is his girlfriend. Okay. Her name is Bree. I but, got so to Zach right. Bryan through Caroline, Melanie Sauter. Uh, when she was in high school, I think, she started listening to him. Melanie told me about him. Is his content of his music good? He's a poet. Is he? He's a little bit. He's like kinda, Tyler Childers? Kinda, but, well, Tyler Childers is a different kind of poet, also a poet, though. But Zach Bryan is a little bit more of a romantic, maybe, than Tyler Childers is. Yeah. And so his uh, has a lot of really thoughtful songs. Now, he's got a lot of feelings. I, would, I don't know, Zach Bryan. Yeah. I'm, I get some four energy. Uh-huh. I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but um, just thoughtful, yeah. you know, yeah. and a lot of reflection about his own life but everyone wants to see him live oh yeah and he but he's also fun i mean he's got some yeah but he's a great musician and he's surrounded by great musicians yes so from what i understand it's a little bit like when you go see like john mayer and you see Mm. people who are at the top of their game yeah zach bryan to me seems to be somebody who attracts people who are at the top of their game and so i love that whole rising tide thing like i do too everybody's like you know doing the best of 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 what they're gifted at doing yeah. and then putting it out there. I also kind of like that he isn't in the industry of country right. music. I, I respect he, it. I do too. I kind of like watching him and Morgan Wallen, though, for very different reasons, <laughs> obviously. But I like watching him just do his thing and go like, mm-hmm. no, don't put that song on pop radio. That's right. I, I, I never wanted it there. Yeah. I, you know, I just like that he's kind of like, I see a vision for where I'm going Yeah. and we will go there. Don't, don't, assume my vision something else right David and I talk about this a lot my, that's my husband not just yes. like a random person yeah. um, <laughs> he's wonderful <laughs> this guy David we just chat yeah. uh, but we talk about how Zach Bryan has I'm so fascinated by his creativity Yeah. and we talk about how he has in so many ways built a career that's not dependent on radio yep that's right he and really, selling out arenas. Right. He caters to the people who listen to his music. Yes. He knows his audience. Yes. And so uh, I just, I don't know. I'm really fascinated by what he's done. I'm fascinated by anybody who kind of goes a non-traditional route yes. to kill it at yes. something. Yes. But no, I just like, I, I, I look at a Zach Bryan or I even look at somebody like a Chapel Roan. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. who, who, how in the world? Like, yeah. How did that happen? Yes. You know, I think, here's what I think. I think there's a generation, uh, like, you know, we've got, I'm the Gen Xer, you're a millennial. Yep. I think our Gen Z. And Zach and the people below us are. Yeah, I think think our Gen Z friends are courageous creatively Mm. in ways that maybe you and I didn't necessarily know we could be, or it took us a long time to learn that we could be. Yes. But they've grown up in this world where they have access to more people just because of the way that they've grown up in the middle of all the different forms of media. Yeah. And they have given themselves permission to really be brave in terms of pursuing their creative outlets. Yeah. And so, I don't know, it's just really neat to me to see kind of the fruit of that. I even look at somebody like Simone Biles, who... Uh, you know, who had the wherewithal four years ago to go, not right now. Yeah, right. As a 23-year-old or something. Not not right this minute. 
And then to address, like, that was so courageous. Yes. And then to address it in her own personal, you know, life, and then to come back and go, okay, right now. Yeah. I've continued to get excellent yeah. at this thing. I've yeah. continued to work at this thing. Yeah. This is the time when I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to run with yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz I'm healthy on all the levels. That's right. Speaking of generations, something you said earlier, you said I saw this on TikTok and he said football's best on Twitter. I talk to me about how you have boundaries with all that. I didn't <laughs> fall asleep last night. I I have a work phone and that's uh-huh. where Instagram is and I uh-huh. never bring it in my bedroom, but I did last night and I stayed up hours too late. Okay. And I'm only on Instagram. Okay. I just scroll far too long. How do you have healthy boundaries with having all the socials? I don't know. Okay. I don't know that I do. I think I am I'm I'm not on any one thing for forever. Like yeah. I will I'm I I don't I don't get any notifications on my phone. Nor I. So I don't I'm not alerted to things yes. for one thing. And like I tend to look at everything maybe like once a day. So not Instagram. I look wow. At, I look, a day. No, that's not true. I look at Instagram in the morning and then I look at Instagram at, at night yeah. you know, or I might check messages or something. But I'm not so much of a scroller except on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do. I can get in a little bit of a rabbit hole with TikTok because that's the thing I like to 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 do like before I go to sleep. Yeah. I like to scroll through TikTok. Yeah. And so I don't know if that's great. I think we're not supposed to do screens right before we sleep, but you know. Uh, but I I really only go to Twitter if something's happened. Oh, got it, got it. Like I don't really post on Twitter anymore. Yeah. I don't I don't interact much on Twitter. We built our Twitters on the same day. Yes, we did. Sitting at the same Annie, table in listen, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's been a long time. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. I don't even have it anymore. I mean, we have the Annie F Downs account, yeah. and we we share from it. But Lonnie does. I mean, I haven't logged into it in two years and Good two for months. You. Um, I miss it when there's a helicopter, there's eight helicopters that go <laughs> over town. I'm always like, Twitter would tell me right now 100%. what those eight helicopters it are would. about. Yeah. I just, I, I wonder if this is a unique to our age bracket problem because I think people, because we feel the tension of I'm not doing this well. Yeah. I like this, but I'm not doing this well. Yeah. I think the generation below us either, it, it, I think they extreme. They either, I don't care. I'm right. on it as much as I want to be on it. And, and this is actually my world and sure. it doesn't feel unhealthy. Or they're the they're the 25 year olds who are going, I have a flip phone. Yeah. I'm all the way out <laughs> on this entire thing. Yeah. And so I've, I've found it really interesting that I think because we are the generation that didn't have internet growing up, but we got it in our 20s. Yeah. And so we've had a, um, we will, I, I'm afraid I will straddle this balance be my entire life. Okay. I don't know what it is because I, I know, like, I know people who I have friends who are like, I'm, I'm off of Instagram. Yeah. I've never, I've never cut it out. Yeah. But I, I wonder too, if part of that is just my personality. Like I'm not like, I, I have friends who have said, I cannot be on, on Instagram one more second. It, it, it. It feeds this thing in me where I get I start to compare a lot, mm. and and that for whatever reason has never been my deal. Like yeah, I'm not a com- I'm not a comparer, um, so I can kind of look and go, oh, that's fun. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. I don't feel it. Yeah. And maybe that's because I'm a nine and I don't feel a lot. Well, I was I don't say, really... <laughs> as a seven, our, one of the things Suzanne Stabile taught me is that always feels like there's holes in the bottom of your bucket. Yeah. And no matter how much you add content or anything, you always feel like it's going out quicker than you're adding. Oh, that's and interesting. And so that's what happens to me on is there's always more to take in. And so okay. I keep going, 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 going okay. because I am enjoying it. And I don't want to, and I'm currently in like, I love weird deep ocean stuff because I don't get in there. And so I will just watch hours of deep ocean stuff and because it never ends. And because the faucet never ends, I I can't turn the faucet off very well. Okay. That makes so so much sense. Yeah, because sevens always want more. We always feel like we're, we, we are never satisfied. Okay. So we always want more. That's more, helpful more, to me more, as more, a parent, more. Annie. Yes. Oh, you know, are you parenting a seven? I'm parenting a seven. Yes. We <laughs> always want more. That's why it's, we can think about the next meal while we're sitting at it. Okay. We can always think of multiple jobs. I'm curious as Alex is deciding what to do. Uh-huh. There's too many job options. It's very hard to decide That's what so to do with your life. up with some yeah. of the discussions that we've had this yeah. summer. Because there's, I mean, it, there's so many options and you want to try them all because the, what if this one falls out of the bucket? 
Oh. And there, you know, yeah. So there's always holes in the bottom of our bucket. So what? So the language instead for me, if this will help you in parenting, the language instead is like, um, <clears throat> you aren't losing anything. You're not losing anything. So you can stop watching this because you're not going to miss anything. You're not losing anything. I, I have to think about that when I'm going on trips. Like I was supposed to go to New York tomorrow and I'm not uh-huh. getting to go this week. And I ha- had to say to some friends, like, New York is not a, not dripping out of my bucket. Okay, I, It is not going anywhere. I have okay. an apartment. I'm, I already have my next trip on the books. But just because this season cha- – I mean, I have to do a lot of self-talk of, like, you're not – yeah. That's how it feels like. Oh yeah. gosh, this is yeah, listen, I'm missing. I just I'm missing. Wanna, I'm missing. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. <laughs> I'm gonna need to go get in my car and think about this. <laughs> I really feel like you have unlocked something that I have not understood in the past. And I'm gonna need to go get in my car I, and, and, it, and think about it. Suzanne helped me so much by teaching me about holes being in the bottom of a bucket. Okay. That's amazing. Because it is like no matter how much you fill up, it's dripping out. So, and so what there's about, always space. What about you at the end of a trip? Okay, at the, at the end, end of a, of a trip, trip, are you like, are you, are you happy because you just had this amazing time? Or are you sad because it has to end? I'm, I'm sorry that it's over. I, I'm okay. like, um, at the end of a trip, I, well, no, actually, at the end of the trip, I am already curious about, I'm already thinking about the fun of the next thing. Okay. Okay. So I'm a little bit sad, but I'm more. But anticipation is a big thing for sevens. Okay. Because we think our bucket may get filled. <laughs> And so yes. could this be the one? Yeah. And then as you get on day three and you realize it isn't, yeah. it's kind of like, oh. Yeah. See, well, maybe a, that will be the one. As a nine at the end of a trip, here's how I am. I'm tired. Like, uh-huh. I need to go home and recover from this. Uh-huh. I need some naps. Yes. Uh, I would like to hibernate for a little bit. Yes. So I never leave a trip sad. I, I always, you know, and of course I don't process anything in real time. It's no. only when I really All look right. back on it that yeah. I make sense of it. But. I almost always leave a trip like, that was so great. I'm so ready to go home. Yeah, I'm usually probably going like, I'll go home. I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm going home because I'd like more of my clothes. Yeah. Because my bucket. Oh, yeah. I, yeah no, oh, that, so, interesting. So I would like, there there are things that have run out that I need more of. Okay. And so so I'm, I'd like to go home to get more of, to get more of something, but I would like to think about what the next exciting thing okay. is. Okay. Here's what's so fascinating about this because I, we do tend to stereotype sevens as like glass half full people. Yeah. I've never thought about the fact that that, that, that glass always has a leak in it. Oh, we wish it was full. <laughs> That's the problem. You think we're half full. What we actually wish is we were all the way full. All the way full. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are going to see, I, in my experience as a seven and of sevens around me, we do see the world as offering so much. Yeah. The, the, the only time I have had, um, Anxiety outside that it, that is not f- done by outside forces. Uh-huh. The only internal anxiety I've ever had is I'm not going to get enough. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. We can do this a lot I, more. I know. I mean, I'm I'm on, I'm on need to. to process this yeah. for a minute. Yeah. I'm gonna have to drive home in well, silence. Listen, here you go. Here comes Birmingham. <laughs> okay, before you drive home though. Okay, Sophie. Here we are. Here I we mean, are. We've done it. Your new book, A Fine Sight to See. I just, we have to talk about it. I know that we could end the show and then you would be fine. Yeah. I finished reading this last week. I mean, you can see there are tabs all in this thing. This is so important. Thanks, Annie. And you like cloak all your work in funny and green beans and <laughs> <Right>. Birmingham and, <laughs> can, you know. Can we use that as a blurb somewhere? Yes, Sophie yes. cloaks all her work in green beans. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, you talk about what you made at a meal and you, <sighs> But my gosh, you walk us through the entire book of Exodus yeah, and talk about Moses and your, as have mine, your belief system about women and leadership has yeah. changed pretty drastically it's in the last a lot. decade. When, when would you say it kicked up? Um, I mean, I think probably, you know, it's been a process. You and I grew up in the same denomination that yes. doesn't, didn't really focus a lot on like, they didn't argue about it. That's right. You know, so I, did, I didn't really know that was a thing. Yeah. But I would say uh, probably over the last 10 years, I think I started, I had a, I was a, an English teacher for a long time. I started working with the girls at school. And I think it was, it was kind of seeing the stuff that they were dealing with behind the scenes and then trying to figure out where all their gifts fit in the, like in the big capital C church and yeah. how they could use those gifts. Just made me start thinking 
you know. Yeah. And it's not – here's the thing. I, I very much understand and respect the fact that people are going to land all over the place in terms of women and leadership and what that looks like in the church. You and do a beautiful job of giving permission to that. Thank you. I mean, like, I, I, I'm not interested. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to win an argument about yeah. that. Yeah. But I do think there's this thing that maybe I became more aware of because I was working with the girls where in our church spaces a lot of times – we don't use the language of leadership for women. Yeah. We use the language of service and the yes. language of helping, which are, to be clear, forms of leadership. But we kind of reserve the leadership pep talks for men. Mm-hmm. We need both. We talk to boys about leadership and porn, and we got to talk to women about that's, leadership that's right. and porn. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that... Uh, I, I just think, you know, every single believer has been entrusted with very specific gifts and very specific ways that they can they can build up the kingdom of God and and point a light towards the, yeah. the, the kingdom of God. Yeah. And I, I just feel like that there are, are, are places where we don't talk about it enough. And I think. The bottom line is that women are leaders, mm-hmm. regardless. I mean, like, and it's going to look different ways in different denominations and different spaces. But so, given that, how do we lead well? What's what's healthy leadership look like? Because yeah. I don't know that we've talked a whole lot about healthy leadership, right? Either, right? So, uh, yeah. So I I love Moses, yeah. and I I kind of felt like I wanted to write about him, but I didn't know what. And so, just one day, I was flying to Houston. I was like, I'm going to read through Exodus and see what's there. And what's there, is, is particularly in the first 20 chapters, is really like an incredibly instructive account of what it what it should look like if we're going to really lead well. Yeah. And if we're going to lead uh, selflessly and mm-hmm. compassionately. Mm-hmm. And um, it was the, the uh, you know, I've written some books. This one is like, it's so down deep in my heart. Like yeah. it's, it's really special to me because it was not just instructive it was healing oh wow to re- like get it all down to get it all down I think to to just be reminded of how um of of how the Lord just in our darkest moments is still paving a way mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know literally for Moses you know his yes how his time in Midian that a lot of people might have considered punishment, yes. you know, when he exiled him, exiled himself, that that was such preparation for for like he that's where he learned to tend to sheep. Yeah, what was he about to yes. do? You yes. know, so uh, it was the sweetest thing to just be reminded of, um, not just not not just how God gifts everybody, mm-hmm. but how. Uh, how deliberately he makes a road for us to walk up those gifts. And I don't think we talk about that a lot in terms of wow. women, Wow, you know, because yeah. we couch it in other language. Yes. Instead of being direct. Instead of being direct. Yeah. And so I was even thinking about this at your show the other night and about, you know, watching you, you know, all those years ago say, I think I want to move to Nashville. Yeah. That back when, again, I, you know, I'll always go back to you taking a step towards my dreams. Yes. 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 <laughs> And uh, what you were really doing was like you were moving yourself because of the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You were moving yourself in, into a position where you were free to lead, mm-hmm. like not just serve, yeah. not just help, yeah. not just write, not just teach, but but lead. Yeah. And uh, And so to me, what the show was the other night really was a celebration of that leadership. Oh, thank you. And the way that leadership has rippled into other people's mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, a lot of times in church spaces, we don't call that leadership. Yeah. You know, we'll say, you know, Annie, she just, she loves people. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, she's such a helper. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being a helper. That's right. It's just... Let's call a thing a thing. Well, I think when the Bible gives all the like, here are the different offices of the church, right? Or whatever that section is called. I think a thing that would have served me when I was growing up uh, is if they if there would have been language around um, 
leadership for women because I, I because I didn't feel like I fit right. when they would talk about serving. I was always like, I think I'm the worst person <laughs> in this youth group because this isn't interesting to Listen. me at all. But I am the student body president of my high school. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't feel like the same thing that the church was no. telling me was what leader well they weren't saying leadership they were saying serving and i was like i will happily scoop the potatoes on wednesday night supper absolutely or like go but none of this feels easy to me and it looks easy to every other girl i'm gonna tell you you've never seen anything as painful as me in the two-year-old nursery at church you've never seen anything anything i love in this book where you talk about how you're like little ones are not my vibe yeah i am not interested your child your child is precious yes and made in the image of god and i am zero percent interested in changing your child's diaper yeah 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 like i just the precious parts of of the language a lot of times that's used around women um particularly in church spaces i don't i don't relate to to that i I don't either i don't relate to that uh i think you know the language of leadership i I absolutely relate to that, not because I'm such a great leader, but because I think so many of us, if we're going to do something, we want to do it with everything we have. We want to do it as well as we have. And so I I, but that's hard to do sometimes in church spaces Yeah, when there are a lot of parameters about you can do this and not that you can stand here, but not there. Yeah, we're going to have to put you down on a platform because we're not going to necessarily let you be on the stage like all that kind of stuff gets to you. After a while. Yeah. And uh, not to mention, I think uh, we could do a better job of letting people hear women's voices, even in our Sunday morning services. Yeah. There's a whole thing about not hearing the voices of women. But all that to say, regardless of where somebody lands in terms of church leadership roles, what I hope this book will do is remind them of of the opportunities that they have to uh, to walk out the the things that they're passionate about yes, yes. and the ways that they know that they're gifted. Because yes. the other thing that happens too with women is this false humility. Yeah. You know, right, like, right, oh, right, no, uh, right. Uh, uh, you know, I think we could own it a little bit better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to tell you about one of our incredible partners, Thrive Cosmetics. Thrive Cosmetics is one of my faves, and I know a ton of y'all love it, too. Their ingredients are clean, and their products are foolproof, so it makes it easy for any skill level to apply. And whether you're going for full glam or a more natural look, they have everything you need. They have thousands of five-star reviews, so it's really no wonder that you see their makeup trending literally everywhere. My absolute favorite product of theirs is their Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. It's the tubing mascara that instantly creates the look of lash extensions. There's no clumping, flaking, smudging. Seriously, it is so easy to remove. It slides right off with warm water and does not leave any smudges. It's wild. It's like a magic trick. All of their products are certified 100% vegan and cruelty-free. Thrive Cosmetics donates to eight major causes, including those impacted by cancer, domestic abuse, and veteran and education organizations. Refresh your everyday look with Thrive Cosmetics, beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order. Oh, that is dangerous. Y'all go do it at thrivecosmetics.com slash TSF. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E, M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash T-S-F for 20% off your first order. And now back to finish up our conversation with Sophie. That sounds fun. I have a thought to share with you, but one of the, I'm going to read you to yourself. This okay. is page 15. Managing my own walk with the Lord is a full-time job, so I'm going to trust that your personal perspective is rooted and grounded in love, and I'm going to trust the work and conviction of the Holy Spirit in you. Yep. I just thought, can we put that on a t-shirt? Listen. Can we make that about, like, like because I, there are so many of our friends listening who don't land necessarily where I land on w- w- women's roles sure. in the church, and I'm okay with that, but I'm with you, because I'm trusting that they're doing their best. Yeah, absolutely. That's Of course, everyone of listening course. to this is doing their best to follow God. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, and obey what the Bible says. I mean, there is that is one of the best parts of argues on the arguments on the internet in my little space. Yeah, as I'm always like, well, here's what I know: you're not unhappy with me because you think I'm not trying, 
and I'm not unhappy with you because I think you're not trying. Right. We're all trying. We're all trying. Yeah. And so so when people end up on different sides on this. Sure. Or si- sides isn't the right word. Spots. Because there's multiple. There's not A yeah. or B. There's a yeah. bunch. Um, what does it look like for women to lead when your theology says that you 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 you're in a church where it's men leading everywhere. Sure. What do you what do you do when your husband is the music minister? <laughs> y'all can't up and go somewhere else. Yeah. No. I listen. I think you know you 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 try as best you can. Yeah. To find ways to call people a higher and better in whatever capacity you can. Oh, got it. You know. So I think that may maybe it's in more of a small group context. Got you know. It. Maybe it's yes. not. Maybe you're you're not going to be the person that they they ask to 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 speak a four part series this summer. That's right. That's right. Uh, but there are spots where and listen, I have friends who are maybe more more conservative theologically than I am who are in spaces where, um, you know, uh, maybe you're not going to hear a woman's voice on on Sunday morning, but teaching the, the, you'll hear a woman's voice yeah, singing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but. but here's what I'll say. But they're doing amazing outreach, you know, yeah. like in in their communities, yeah, and mobilizing people in yes. their communities. Yes, and the thing is, they just wouldn't say like so and so is our leader. Yes, they would say, you know, she's our committee head. Yeah, that's right. And, and I would just like to see us use more language of leadership to empower yeah. the women in whatever capacity. Yes, they are 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 equipped and gifted to lead yep. in the spaces where they are um, leading for us to call it that yes, and uh, give them some freedom to run with it. I also love that in the book, you do, you do this beautifully. And I think our friends listening are going to love this part is, is almost, it's like, okay, when we give permission to start using this language, it does not mean those who are really called to serving and who Absolutely. like really connect with that. We are not removing that. We're opening the door wider. No, absolutely not. I loved that about your book. No, absolutely. I would never want to diminish that in any way. I think the deal is to recognize, oh, like service is my heartbeat. Yes. That is where I lead. Yes, yes, yes. And I had this whole epiphany, and this is not in the book, but I had this whole epiphany when I was writing about my mama Uh because she would have never called herself a leader. Like that was just not the language of the silent generation. (laughs) Weta that we spoke of (laughs) already. Yeah, this is Weta. But I'll tell you what my mama did because she would would say, I just, I love to be at home. And she did. And she would say, I love to make pound cakes. And she did. Uh, But my mama had a knack for she could spot a, a woman who was maybe new to our community or wow. new in our church yeah. who was away from family. And she had an ability to, uh, to, to, to sort of invite that woman into her life where really what was happening, I think we would maybe call mentorship. Yes. Yes. But she would have never called it that. Yeah. But she just became a safe place. And so yes. there's this, this string of women that I can remember from the seventies on in mama's life yep. who were uh, just in need of somebody to, to keep their kids when they yeah, went to doctors, you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So mama would have absolutely identified with that service thing. But what I'm telling you is she was a leader. Yes, that's right. She was a leader. And uh, she was a leader in terms of how she led younger women. Yeah. And um, and I wish she were alive, you know, yeah. so we could talk about it. Yeah. So. Talk to, I mean, I think there's a, we'll, we'll wrap up with this. Uh, I think there is a group of women who are moms Mm -hmm. listening who think it's all I can do to keep my kids like fed, clothed. And how is this leadership? Oh, but uh, listen. Right. A hundred percent. I mean, it's such leadership. Uh, if you're one, if you have influence over another person, you're a leader. In Jesus that had life. 12 and everybody listening yeah. has more Facebook friends. Than that. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's right. So I think the thing, you know, about about motherhood, particularly to littles, is that it you don't necessarily see a huge payoff in the moment, you yeah. know, for what you're yeah. doing. So it's yeah. a it's a long term leadership road. Yeah. Um. So I would say absolutely women with with young kids are 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 leading they are they're using all the things that they've been gifted with yeah. and, and the ways they've been equipped to yeah. impact and affect the lives of their children for good but yeah. i would also say this there's probably something else in their lives that makes their heart beat a little faster yeah and it's okay yeah it's okay yeah. to keep going back to that thing yeah it's right. okay 
if, you know, in the dark of night and you've had this, you know, you've had this idea for this, uh, this novel for a really yeah. long time, or you've low key been writing songs, you know, since yeah. you were six, yeah. or if you uh, are never more at peace than you are when you have a, a blank canvas in front of you and a bunch of paint, like it's not selfish to indulge those things yep. because it's a part of how you're gifted. Yeah. It's going to get connected to your leadership at yep. some point. I believe that That's with great. everything in me. Yeah. So keep practicing it. Like keep whatever those things are that lights you up apart from that very immediate leadership role that you have in your house. Like can like continue to to feed those things in little doses whenever you can. And 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 just remember that uh, you're not, I think we hear this idea that we're selfish sometimes. Uh, if we want to practice the ways we've been gifted. Oh, yeah. That we, and sometimes you do have to lay stuff aside. You can't, you really can't do everything at once. But I cannot tell you how grateful I am that in that phase of my life when, you know, I had a little kid that there were just little ways that I found to keep writing, you yeah, know, yeah. and uh, Melanie and I started a podcast. We found yes. ways to keep talking. Yes. And so I would just say, remember, you know, you're, you're probably not made just to lead with one thing. Yes. That's true for all of us. Yeah. I mean, I think that's I think sometimes my version of leadership gets celebrated more than mom's leadership. Yeah. Because it looks more it looks easier to celebrate. Well, you have an office. That, right. Right, right. And yeah, there's immediate results. This, I know. I can't get over this office, everybody. Y'all need to know. It's the fanciest thing. Like, there's an office. It has rooms. There are desks. You said, I have to go to two doors down I have to, to get, get the two studio. doors down. It's fantastic. So but yeah, I think, so I think because, and I think because motherhood can be, it's so fun, but it can be such a drain. Yeah. And, and I, it is a marathon. You're doing a, this for a long time. It's a time. marathon. Now, for some people, it's the very best way to utilize the ways that you just feel hardwired you know to love the world um and lead yeah but for some people it's not and so i would just say if uh, you know i i don't know that that i really fired on all cylinders with motherhood i loved it but it was it never felt like maybe the most natural fit for me um that's okay like we all have to lead at times in places where we don't necessarily feel like you know, maybe we're the most qualified. Yeah, yeah. But you get to keep practicing the things that you love. And yeah. I don't know, one thing that I that I love so much about about Moses, and I think where he is all of us, is the amount of time he tried to spend convincing God that he was not the, he was actually not the man for this job. Yeah, yeah. Let me just tell you God all the ways why I'm I'm not the one. Yeah, I am not the one yeah, you want. Yeah. And uh and God was so patient with him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So patient with him. And eventually he found his way and he found his voice. Yeah. And it wasn't perfect. Yeah. And people got on his nerves. Yeah. Uh but man, he was faithful. And so I think just the encouragement to remain faithful and to know that remaining faithful with the ways that you are gifted and with the things that you love, that's leadership. Yes, that's right. I feel like what you, we haven't even mentioned the mother of us all, Beth Moore. But I think one of the things Beth has done for us, Beth, I I would say this is Priscilla, Kay Arthur, uh, Joyce Meyer. There's some women of that generation. I know that's multiple generations, but when we were coming up in this as bloggers, there was one path. You were a Bible study teacher. A hundred percent. And what has happened in the last decade is suddenly we went like, oh, they just opened a gate. And we thought they opened a gate to a path and they opened a gate to a field. Yes. And so oh, that's we, good, Annie. right. So like the first couple of years, everybody was writing Bible studies and teaching like that because that's all we saw. Yeah. Leading ahead of us. Yeah. But now once we've all fallen into our actual giftings. Yes. And so literally a fine sight to see. 15 years ago, this would have been a Bible study with six weeks of teaching. <laughs> right. But instead, I'd, I'd it's have a been Sophie in field. book. Yeah. I would have been in a field yeah. uh-huh, in front of an old truck. That's right. Uh-huh. And instead, this is a Sophie book that is does that depth of teaching that we do in a Beth Moore Bible. I mean, this is deep work. But it is you. Thank you. And I just think that is, I think that's awesome. That's one of my favorite things. I thought she has bamboozled me into reading a Bible study. (laughs) I thought I was reading something different, but you bamboozled me into reading a Bible study. I think you're exactly right about the generation before us. And I think if I, this will probably make me cry and I'm not a crier, but that's exactly, I think, why I wrote this book. It's because I want the young women behind us to run free. Yes. 
like in any direction they feel like they're they're gifted to lead. I want them to run free. Yes. And uh, I'm not saying there, there there won't need to be guardrails around things from time certainly, to time. And certainly, certainly there are guardrails in place depending on what dom- denomination you might belong to yes. or whatever. Yes. But I want those young women to know that God has gifted them so purposefully. Yes. You know, for the for the exact spaces that he's going to call them into. Yes. And I don't want them looking over their shoulder, feeling like they need to ask somebody permission. That's right. To use those gifts. That's right. That's right. And I think, you know, I, I, I think what Moses reminds us of is the sufficiency of God's leading and the sufficiency of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's good. So uh, I want to see him go. Yeah. I want to see them run fast. Yeah. And I want to see them run on purpose. Yeah, that's right. And and what we get to do now, what Beth and those other women did for us, maybe maybe the analogy continues with where they worked insanely hard to open doors for us mm-hmm. and open gates for us. Now we get to help build the fences around oh. the field and go like, you're not going to want to come all the way over here. <laughs> you're not going to like, let me like, like y'all can yeah. go faster if you will yeah. stay inside the fences that yeah. we had to build with our mistakes. That's right. So now y'all can go as far as you want to go, but just here are the fences because I don't want in 10 years there to be documentaries about women pastors blowing up. Like we see documentaries about male pastors. Right. Blowing up. Right. We want, cause we, so we got to help them be healthy. Uh, in that's a hundred percent. it. You yeah. got to be healthy. Yeah. You got to be healthy. Yeah. You got to be healthy. That's right. And uh, you cannot, you can, you can try with all your might to manipulate your way into yep. something that you think looks like what you want to do. Yep. It is not sustainable. Nope, 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 nope. And so here's what I'll say to our friends. Listen, you and I are not building a course. No. We're not going to start <laughs> having cohorts. But you can, if you are a female leader looking for help, there's Christine Kane's Propel. There is um, Joe Saxton leads women. Right. Uh, Jess Connolly. I mean, there are women in that you and I really trust. Right. Who are I think I think that's fair to say, right? Yeah. I mean, that that are helping women leaders be healthy. Yeah. Yeah. We, I'm not building a cohort. No, I'm not either, Amy. No, I'm no. not I'm not interested. That no. that is not my journey. Yeah, no. But for mine. some people it is their but journey. But please go find a cohort. If you yeah. if you want to be healthy in leadership in the church, then then we also need to do what the men are doing. And and the alarm that is going off with men in church is uh-huh. pastors want to quit because no one's helping them be healthy. Right. Could, can we pay attention to that alarm that is not That's for right. us? That's right. And go ahead and build it different. Right. Well, you know, one of the things that I loved in going through Exodus was, and I can't, I'm not going to get the chapter right. Maybe it's Exodus 18. I'm not sure. But it's when uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, mm-hmm. comes in mm-hmm. to celebrate all that God has done. Crossing the Red Sea, the whole deal. Yes. They celebrate and they, uh, they make offerings and the whole deal. The next day, Jethro watches Moses. Yep. And... Uh, Moses is settling disputes with the Israelites. Yep. And uh, Jethro goes, hey, this is, you can't do this. Yeah. Like, this is not going to go well that. for you. Yeah. This is not going to go well for them. Yeah. And then he helps him figure out a better way to do it. Yeah. And I think that's what we get to do for each other. That's right. So if we have a little bit more experience under our belts, we want to be a Jethro. That's right. If, uh, and listen, Moses was real old at this point, right? Yeah. Like he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was not a spring chicken. But put yourself in a place where you can be the healthiest version of you. Yes. That you can be. You know, we need, listen, we need men and women. We that's need brothers right. and sisters. That's right. We've just gotten weird about some of it. That's right. That's right. And that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> Stay tuned for when we come that's back right. to talk about the Billy Graham role. That's right. Everyone. And listen, there there are friends of ours listening whose denomination has had women leading for a long time. So this is they settled the, it. The thing they need to hear us say is we are both in 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 the last decade of understanding this. So this is newer yeah, for us. It's newer for us. So, and yeah. I think I spent a lot a big chunk of the last decade trying to figure out how because I worked with younger women. Yeah. Like trying like kind of looking at things going, huh? Huh. Yeah. That's right. Huh. That's right. And so now that I'm outside of that space, yeah. I feel like I have the freedom yeah. to talk about yeah. what I learned a little bit. All right. I've kept you way longer than I promised Listen, I would. I the, I'm so this, sorry. This, this, I know no, you got to drive. I, I don't care. This has just been... This, this is, is the... I, we could just do it forever. I know. I this is how I feel when I listen to Big Boo, Big Boo Cast, which there's also a Patreon people should look up because I love the Patreon. The Patreon episodes are like my favorite for Thanks, y'all Amy. and for um, uh, Popcast. But... 
Uh, my favorite last question we always ask. Yes. That you got to answer is because the show is called That Sounds Fun. Tell yes. me what sounds fun to you. Uh, I'm going to tell you. I've actually been thinking about this. Okay, I'm good. Gonna, I'm going to tell you what. It's it's adjacent to what we were talking about earlier. Okay. But I'm going to tell you what sounds real fun to me right now. Dips. <gasps> oh, it's dip season. <laughs> People don't know. <laughs> People don't know. Again, we are the denomination that's been doing this for a while. So if you're newer to college football, let us let us build your okay, cohort, I've, your dip cohort. I've already started thinking about it, Annie. I'm like, okay, so the first game is happening here. Just well, it will have happened by the yeah, time yeah, this episode yeah. comes out. And I've really thought, like, what what are the dips going to be? What are the top tier dips going to be that okay. are that are going to like make their way into this? New season celebration. Yes. I haven't completely settled on it yet. Right. Do you lean a corn or do you lean a meat or do you? I actually, I'm, I don't lean meat. Okay, really? But I increasingly just don't lean that way oh, okay. in general. As a person. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I love a corn dip. Yeah. I same. love a corn dip. I love a, I love a, a you know, some sort of cheese board situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's really my best life. Yeah. But uh, I love, I love a corn. I love a black bean situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I, I really got to do some research. I'm going to you- tell you the low key MVP right now for me in terms of dips. Yes. Uh, is in the grocery store. What? It's, Pre-made? Uh-huh. Uh, it's the Daisy, who the sour yeah, cream people. Yeah. It's their French onion dip. It's, what? It's is n- it as good as? It's next level. Excuse me as I take a note. <laughs> Samara Joy, Daisy onion dip. Uh-huh. Okay. Daisy French onion dip. They have a ranch dip, too. I'm, that's not my That's not my deal. No. But the, their French onion dip is like the French onion dip of my youth. Wow. French onion dip with ruffle, ruffle potato Nothing better. chips. Listen, there's this Nothing little kid better. who keeps shutting up on TikTok. He's like probably like a year and a half. And all he does is take a ruffle and dip it in the French onion dip. Yep. And he eats that French onion dip and he puts that ruffle back in there. Oh, great. Uh-huh. Great. So we can feel real good about the generations yes. behind us. But the Daisy French onion dip okay. is, it's really, it's, it's, it's going to restore I'm going to buy it today. Uh-huh. Um, do you know there is, you, I think you have a copy of the Pam Downs cookbook. I do have a copy of the Pam Downs uh, which cookbook. Which our friend, my friend Chad Markley said, I've never seen a, a cookbook with more mayonnaise and shrimp, <laughs> which is true. I will tell you, if you, are, if you have any objection to a cream of soup, yeah. you need to stay <laughs> this away. This isn't the one for you. <laughs> but there is a, mom used to, used to make this shrimp dip, but the shrimp are as small as the top of your pinky. I know exactly. Those sh- mini. Uh-huh. I'm jonesing for that. Okay, that's it. I haven't thought about that in forever. That's my dip that I'm bringing to game one as I'm bringing tiny shrimp dip. Okay. I haven't thought about that in forever. My mama had a similar situation. It's such, it, it, was, it was such an old school dip, man. It was so fancy in the 80s. Oh, because the shrimp are so small. <laughs> They're amazing. It's not, I just need everybody to picture, picture a shrimp. The size of your pinky fingernail. Yeah. Where are those shrimp? I don't know. Where do they come from? They are, I don't know. They, I, I, they cannot be ethically harvested. I don't believe. I don't no. know that they're, I don't know what that is. They're sea is. monkeys, practically. <laughs> they're so small. I can't That's imagine. Funny. But I'm going to look for, I'm going to get the daisy onion dip and I'm going to get tiny shrimp today at the grocery store. Okay. Okay, dips. Why, yeah, that that may be your next uh, internet maybe sensation so. is maybe. just dipping us through football season. Maybe so. I mean, I, I really, I think it's the finest of the food groups. It's the best. I mean, it is the, mm-hmm. you're right. Nothing, nothing makes me feel, I mean, even as we've been talking, I've been laughing in my head of like, man, I am equal parts so grateful to be where we are in the church. And I deeply miss 1984. Oh, and a like, family, like a family night supper, listen, Annie. Listen, family night supper, Wednesday nights at First Methodist. Well, you were just at First Methodist, Mary. I was just at First Methodist, that, Mary. And let me tell you, they had a spread for that listen. event. The family night supper deal. See, this yeah. is a rabbit trail we could really spend some time on. But what I loved about it, in addition to the fact that we all showed up and everybody just everybody. Brought, brought a casserole dish and yeah. you just dug in, yeah. is that there were certain people's dishes you knew you just just, make, just continue on just down the skip line. skip on, yeah. You, you yeah. know, like... Maybe that that was not that was not maybe one person's particular area of leadership. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. But they felt good about it. Uh-huh, they felt uh-huh. real good about it. But the array of congealed salads was really <gasps> and one so of my favorite. I know. So I'm, good. Sometimes I crave Jello. Isn't that I weird? No, I'm with you. It but, is. There is something to it. Do you know? There's a church in New York. I'll shout them out. Central Presbyterian. They do every Sunday after church. They do like an outside hang with like lemonade and stuff to help people get to know each other. And I'm like. Brilliant. 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 That is what mm-hmm. the church did in the 80s and in the night where it was like, just stick around for 10 minutes. That's right. And meet each other. I love that. With lemonade. I know. Okay, dips. 
Dips. I can't wait. Dips for the year. So Dips. I love you. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for having me. It was a of delight course. as always. Yeah, I can't wait for people to read this book. And y'all just stay tuned. We may have a sports show on <laughs> in the future. <laughs> I know. You never know. Never Listen. Know. I know. What what might the Lord have for us, Annie? <laughs> Where's our leadership in sports? It's coming. That's right. That's right. Uh, Oh, you guys, isn't she the best? Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, this book is a wowie zowie. I do, it's like Sophie wrapped this deep theology in like a casserole. In like a casserole. It's so good. Go grab your copy of A Fine Sight to See and go follow Sophie Boo Mama on social media. Tell her thank you so much for being on the show. The way y'all think our guests matters so much. We really appreciate every time you take time to do that. If you enjoyed this episode, go back and listen to any of our previous episodes with Sophie. Again, it's 51 and 228. Or listen to episode 204 with her big BooCast co-host, Melanie Schenkel, also known as Big Mama. If you have any questions from this episode, you can drop them in the Q&A box on your Spotify app if you're a Spotify listener like me. Or send them to us on Instagram at That Sounds Fun Podcast. Make sure you are following there. There is a lot of fun stuff going on there. We'll try to answer your questions as well. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Annie F. Downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, New York City, anywhere you may need me, that's where you can find me. I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out or stay home. Do something that sounds fun to you, and I will do the same. Today, what sounds fun to me is meeting up with my friend Danielle Walker and doing some good eating in New York before we go to her live event this week. Oh, I cannot wait. If y'all haven't checked it out, her book is fresh out as well. A new cookbook. It's awesome. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you back here on Thursday with author, podcaster, tour mate of mine, and one of my dearest friends, Carlos Whitaker. See y'all Thursday. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Oh, that sounds fun. Check one, two on the microphone. And he have downed in your car to your home. Every week it's something new. A deep talk or an interview. She'll make it laugh. She'll make you cry When it's dark out, she's a light When you're down, get you feeling right Oh, man, that's, that's some fun, fun.